Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Friday with Anne. Hello, Anne. Hi, Ost. Good morning. Um, we had a very interesting chat last time about um, gems and stones and classifications, and we will continue on this topic somehow, <laughs> somewhat. Mm -hmm. okay. um, first of all, as we didn't go into the detail of the questions that one of the listeners from Canada had sent in, I want to address them um, with you, uh, basically just ask you directly and then we can go on to another topic. So last time we spoke, we were looking for general themes for stones as a group. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the homeopath, she sent in a question asking whether there is also some type of group characteristic for trees as a group in homeopathy. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, that's a good question. I heard that question before, actually, uh, that um, big trees have or are supposed to have common characteristics. And according to me, I don't really see the point. Mm -hmm. Because big trees is, um, is not a taxonomic group to start with. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of plant families have trees and, 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 and bushes and, and small plants in their same family. And, yes. Um, according to the place where they live, they're bigger or smaller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not only the trees, but other plants as well. And uh, I think, according to me, they are mostly loaded with symbolism. Mm -hmm. And the symbolism mm -hmm. is the, the um, what they represent for us. Like, it uh -huh. really is much bigger than us, and it has its roots in the soil, and it has this, this firm stem, and then this, you know, this, this wide, um, uh, 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 upside uh, branches like uh, in the air but all plants have their roots in the soil and 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 the leaves in the air i mean they're not our own representatives of our connection with heaven and earth and all that it's a symbol it's yes it's uh -huh. a very usable symbol but i don't see any particular characteristic to trees that other plants wouldn't have Mm -hmm. Although I'm aware that people sometimes say, yeah, but, you know, a person who wants it, who needs a tree wants to do big things and they want to be big. And I'm not sure. I think we're not on solid ground here. <laughs> <laughs> You're not sure, meaning that you haven't made the experience. You don't think so. Actually, not at all. No, you know, the Michal Yakir system uh, in the second uh, column, Mm -hmm. There are many trees. Mm -hmm. The second column is uh, represented by like a first division of the, the, the feminine wholeness. The uh -huh. Step where the masculine aspect enters. And the whole row is characterized by doubt and hesitation and insecurity. Mm -hmm. Not like these big leaders who, you know, self-aware, know what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the contrary, they want to do big things, but they feel very weak and all that. You have weakness and strongness, which is, to me, makes more sense than uh, our symbolism of the big tree is the symbol of grandeur or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, because otherwise I think um, we could also expect that shrubs, bushes, would share the same... Um, characteristics somehow or maybe t 
tiny plants. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, feel small and medium plants feel medium mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think yeah. so. I yeah, don't yeah, think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's very good that people attempt to find systems and and characteristics in groups. And I talked about this uh, book of uh, Todd Rowe, Desert Remedies, another mm -hmm. and a very thorough work that I you know read with a lot of interest on common characteristics of desert phenomena, whether it be plants or minerals or animals. And yes, he finds some characteristics, of course, living in the desert himself. He's from Phoenix, right? And <laughs> yeah, I can understand his resonance with the desert. You know, there, of course, there's something to it. And of mm. course, the desert feel is completely dis different than, than the jungle feel or, mm. or a mountain area. But does it apply to our plants? I, I was in Iceland this summer. And I saw for the first time in my life trees crawling on the soil, on the floor. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the circumstances, the weather is so harsh, the climate is so severe that the plants, the trees, don't even manage to grow upright. I saw <laughs> willow trees lying on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, where is this doing big things of the tree? It's circumstantial. Yeah. Do we have ice? Do we have an Icelandic biome? I don't think mm -hmm. we have circumstances. So, before we talked about what is the sensation, it is like the seed, it's like the carrot seed mm -hmm. that you plant in your in your garden. What is the personality? It's you. It's a result of the circumstances. But we prescribe for the sensation. We prescribe for the carrot seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it's you know, whether it, it has grown up in in um, um, good circumstances or in bad circumstances, and so the yeah. circumstances determine how the the plant, for instance, will look like. But it's still the same plant. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes. So. Um, all right, yeah. I mean, uh, I had that. Uh, and the homeopath from Canada who sent the question also was uh, saying that uh, botanically, they are not all in one group, one uh, trees are not all in one group, one family. So it seems that there is a lot of, um, a lot of what's it called coherence between homeopathic families and botanical biological families so it was mm. from that point of view also unlikely to be uh, found in homeopathy no no I, I understand we we definitely need all these uh, charts and overviews but sometimes i think we make an attempt that in the end doesn't prove to be very useful mm. Yeah, and as you say, uh, we make the group of trees, but um, it's not a, a group uh, in, in scientific terms. Not at all. No. Yeah. Not at all. Right. So, so much for the classification of um, certain substances. Today mm -hmm. we wanted to speak um, for the major part about another classification and was the classification of disease yes. and it's a classification that Hahnemann himself the great Hahnemann has already written in his organon and this is also something um, yeah which we wanted to uh, dig out again so mm -hmm. I invite you to share what is um, important about this nowadays and what is your perspective on it yes classification of diseases it's one of those um, lessons in the first year that probably students dread and then well, listen to and then as soon as possible forget <laughs> <laughs> as as it belongs to you know organ on stuff and all those things that something you have to aphorisms oh. yeah, you have to endure but after two years the, the 
it's over and done. And it's not. It's very practical. As mm -hmm. A lot of uh, aphorisms in the organon actually give practical um, recommendations. Now, this question seems to be timeless, so to say. It? And the more you read it, the more you say, this is still actual. It could have been written like recently. Yeah, it's yeah. So the classification of diseases in, in, a, in a broad sense, we have new diseases, but in his time he saw, and this was new, he made a, a big, um, how to say, um, uh, separation between acute and chronic diseases, right? Mm. Which for us now is all um, normal. You, know, you think, yeah, of course we know that. But for him, it was like the first time he really saw this because disease is very often equal to acute disease. Mm -hmm. So his, his whole theory of chronic diseases was actually revolutionary. Uh, in these acute diseases, he made um, a distinction between like individual acute diseases, like if you have a pneumonia, you have an individual acute diseases. There are also um, contagious acute diseases. Mm -hmm. diseases. Mm -hmm. Then you get an epidemic, you know, like influenza, whatever. Uh, and then there are this particular kind of um, acute diseases, contagious acute diseases that you can have only once in a lifetime. And we call them children diseases. Because yeah, most of the time they occur during childhood mm -hmm. and, and they give lifelong immunity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is not the case for other acute diseases, not all other acute diseases. Some yes. Eh? If you have hepatitis A, A, then you will be immune for the rest of your life. But it's not the case for all immune dis um, contagious epidemic diseases. You mm -hmm. can have some more than once. Eh? But yeah, with yeah, yeah. You do diseases normally, you don't. If you mm -hmm. do, then it's a rubric to prescribe for. It's mm -hmm. Then it's a symptom. So that's, let's say we all understand this, that's the acute part of, uh, of the, the whole disease picture. And then you have chronic diseases. And of course, with our patients as uh, uh, non-doctors, we see more people with chronic diseases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, because of the emergency feeling with an acute diseases or people are not sure that non-doctor homeopaths are well enough trained eh, to um, be aware of, of, of yeah. possible danger etc and yeah. also because chronic patients don't find any relief any anywhere else eh? yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so they try things uh, uh, medication and all that to suppress their symptoms, but they realize, or some of them realize that in the end they get, they don't get better, or they even get sicker. And mm -hmm. that is what Hahnemann already uh, understood that when a chronic disease is not treated, it gets worse by itself. Even if mm -hmm. you don't do anything, it's just getting worse. It's not gonna gonna leave you one day. Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's constitutional. It's a con like a constitutional weakness. And it will um, probably not show itself too much when you're young and full of energy. Mm -hmm. But uh, according to your lifestyle, it will show itself in, in your late twenties or thirties and get and getting worse unless you do something like mm -hmm. treating the chronic disease with uh, a miasmatic remedy. So he saw three kinds of um, chronic diseases because he said you have real chronic diseases and you have not real chronic diseases. So the, the unreal chronic diseases, he said, are either due to lifestyle, mm -hmm. which is not a chronic disease in itself. If your symptoms are a result of the way you, you lead your life, and he describes like living in, in humid cellars or whatnot, not, not seeing any daylight or not, not exercising or, you know, drinking too much or something, then Obviously, you should change your circumstances. Mm -hmm. That would be enough. If, he says, if then your symptoms disappear, you didn't have a chronic disease at all. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Not a symptom, an expression of something inside. It's just a result of your circumstances. That mm -hmm. seems very clear to everybody. And then he says another uh, kind of um, an unreal chronic disease is due to medical treatment. Yeah. Uh, he even says in his organ on, 
uh, and uh, how actual can you be, that these are the worst of all. Yeah. In his notes, he, he, he used uh, a few uh, more or less dirty words to say that, you know, this treatment is actually ruining the patient and making him virtually incurable. Yeah. Yeah. And so, if there was one thing that I would change about the organon, it would I would take out all the ranting of the allopath. That's a bit overdoing it, but anyway, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. Well, even if you can see that it is the result of medication, and, and, and the medication at that time was surely, uh, you know, very harsh as well. Eh? It was, it, it it was more, it was more apparently barbaric. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and it was like clear poisonous sometimes yeah? mm -hmm. but the end, the end result is the same if you give a little bit of poison every day or you give like big doses of poisons in a short period of time the end result might be more or less the same yeah. but then you have the real chronic diseases which on which we always focused focused in the training and focused with our patients the real chronic diseases the miasmatic diseases you have three you know <laughs> sora psychosis and syphilis that's Hahnemann's big invention mm -hmm. and from then on we started to uh, determine whether our patient belonged to one of these chronic states and we saw Sora as the underlying cause of all of them and then all the miasms were built upon it like the cancer mice and the tubercular mice and, and and until today we focus on only this you know like 95 percent of all the the attention goes to this only this class of of diseases while i think we overlook the other reasons so that's why it's important exactly that is now the interesting part because this classification is a classification that distinguishes between one or the other or the other or the other yeah which probably is not seen nowadays very often in real life mm -hmm. i don't know about back then but nowadays i would say there is a lot of mixture of these aspects oh yeah oh yeah and that probably is one of the reasons of our so-called complicated cases we see nowadays yeah. more and more and more we say oh 30 years ago you know our cases seem to be clearer straightforward we, we just saw like a podium walking in or we saw sepia walking in or something <laughs> or, or even after 10 minutes we knew it was nature mur and, and now we don't see those cases anymore and which is true mm -hmm. we prescribe not because we have a thousand other remedies to prescribe for but we, we don't see those cases from the book uh, very often and so what why do you think that is you said um, it, so it's not because we know more remedies that we are mm -hmm. able to see more remedies mm -hmm. but what, what has changed then well one of the things is of course our knowledge has refined so we see mm -hmm. more remedies what we before would have thought an atrium maybe now we see it's you know a, a less known compound in, in on the periodic table somewhere there but not quite yes the other thing is our patients became more complex as well i wrote a few blogs on that 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 why that's why my blog is called homeopathy for the 21st century that we we entered a century where everything changed circumstances changed and so the world changed and so the patient as well they also changed and in what way well part of it i think is a result of how they were treated and we know from childhood on they won't have had childhood diseases probably because of the vaccination so at that time when people did have childhood diseases it was considered or at least some people still consider it today as like a big jump in your evolution something that you have to throw off in order to evolve more quickly and you know even anthroposophical view nowadays still holds to that a conviction very much so yes yeah. yes and always you know if the parents witness this truth it's not an invention yeah. parents see that after the measles like the child no and it's nothing that a doctor could observe because they normally don't know the children enough to be able to see a development or a jump 
in development, a leap in development no. in a child that they see in their practice? They don't see them enough to see the before and after difference. So let's say they're deprived eh, of that, yeah. of that mm -hmm. experience, that necessary evolutionary step, etc. Mm -hmm. What result, what long-term result this has, we actually don't really know. We are worried about all the ad additional products that are put in vaccines. That's one thing. There's a lot of poisons in it. It's not a good idea to yeah. inject it in babies. We all do agree. But on the other hand, we also prevent them of having the disease that has a disease aspect, but also maybe a curative aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we see disease as something to be, by all means, to be avoided. Yes, yes. And childhood diseases, of, yeah, of, although they have a danger in them for weak people, for weak children, uh, there is a danger. But Which we see nowadays mainly in, in developing countries, yeah. Mm -hmm. People are undernourished and, and etc. You know, the circumstances are so bad that even the diarrhea kills a lot of babies. Yeah. They shouldn't die of those, it, let's say, trivial causes. But anyway, yeah. so that's one thing. Most of our patients, if they're younger than 60, let's say, will have, will have had... Uh, uh, the, the vaccinations or at, at least a few, five, mm -hmm. six or ten, you know, I think nowadays mm -hmm. it's up to 40 shots before you're two years yeah. or something. Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one reason. We see the long-term effects of, of multiple vaccinations and a lot of repetitions and all that. That's one thing. Then how many patients do you see who don't take medication? They become rarer and rarer bit to day. Yeah. 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 The, Especially the, as the population is also aging more or mm -hmm. is surviving longer, uh, there are hardly people who are not under constant medication in their 60s or 70s. Agree. And the, the older, most, mostly, the more medication they take because, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical industry thrives on the old people. Right? They, they take mm -hmm. a lot of and they're very loyal to their doctors and all that. But even young people, the, the women start with anticonception. Well, that's, that's medication, right? Yeah. It's hormones, yeah. It's the hormones in your body from very early age, 14, 15, yeah. 16 sometimes. And that is considered normal to, to take that for a few decades. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, you know, all the people with concentration problems and they take a pill, uh, they pop a pill to have better exams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. students take pills to sleep better and whatnot. It's so common yeah. to take a pill for everything. I even had a scientific person who considered uh, the, the feel-good pill as a rational uh, a solution for her depression. Yeah. Mm, scientific yeah. pill. To come up with an idea like this, that the feel, uh, the feel good pill is a hormone. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> it regulates the brain chemistry. Yeah, who wants that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, if you have nowhere else to look for, then um, correcting chemistry in your body, then that's an obvious choice. And it becomes the new normal. It yeah. becomes the new normal. Nobody thinks that it's strange that. I think 30% of all prescriptions in Belgium are antidepressants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one out of three patients get the prescription. Maybe they don't all take it, but most of them think it's, well, you know, I need my pill and, you know, yeah. things like that. And yeah. So we get those patients. Mm -hmm. And so you have, so that is then largely, as it sounds, due to an increase or maybe not an increase of um, probably also an increase of medication, which is yes. again Hahnemann's category of allopathically induced disease. Yeah, not real chronic diseases. But yeah. since, let's say, since Sankara, we consider mm -hmm. all patients as chronic patients. Why? Because we understand that everybody has a uniqueness and the sensation actually is the equals the uniqueness in a person so even in in sankran's idea 
um, a, an acute state, eh? not an acute disease, but an acute state is a miasmatic state of being in the world. Mm? So that is your way of being. So mm -hmm. Hahnemann would have said if you, you know, you stop your medication and maybe you do some detoxification um, um, measures, then your chronic disease will be gone. Now, we consider this not the case anymore. Your chronic disease is the way you are. That will never be gone, no matter what you <coughs> do. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, and it's not the purpose of the homeopath to make this disappear, because what would be left yeah? mm -hmm. if your uniqueness is gone? So that will always be there. We will try to align this unique being in the most harmonious way possible, which is higher self and all that. But we don't try to to make it vanish. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so all people would be equal. So that is where we differ from Hahnemann. That means if Hahnemann says there's only one kind of chronic disease, the miasmatic one, we've changed in that object, um, in that matter. We consider now everybody as basically a chronic case <laughs> mm -hmm. that can have an epidemic disease or an acute disease or whatever, or a layer or an extra complication of medication, mm -hmm. vaccination, and the third thing is of um, what he calls lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a mm -hmm. mixture of all of that. And yeah. the lifestyle topic is becoming more prominent as well because even if you don't take medication your lifestyle might be um, either uh, triggering or how to say um, keeping your your symptoms uh, in place mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that is all well and good. So how do we handle it actually in real practice? Mm -hmm. I understand the ideas and I understand the complication mm -hmm. and I understand that our perspective has shifted, yeah. that um, now we see disease also, what has shifted is that we see disease actually more rooted in levels beyond mind and body, even though that's what Hahnemann said back then, but uh, he didn't... Um, how can I say, he didn't uh, look at the precise facets of all the emotional states and what might be behind the emotional states. He would still look at very much at, uh, so to say, superficial emotional and detailed physical aspects. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And, and they're still reliable because they're not so much um, the subject of interpretation. But yeah. they are harder to differentiate the one from the other. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. on the physical level, we are more alike than on the mental emotional level. <laughs> yes, and especially also with all the medications, a lot of the physical symptoms um, don't find their constant expression. And people have little observation of peculiar physical symptoms because they're suppressed most of the time when they come to us. So. Yeah. it's not a good differentiation so what do we do apart from um, no not apart from but w with all these new insights what do we do in actual practice how do we approach a case yes so my first question always it sounds maybe a bit silly but my, my first question always is what kind of patient is in front of you what kind of case mm -hmm. So I think this is a good starting point for any case. In after 10, 15 minutes, you can ask yourself, and if you cannot um, um, make it explicit, then you can even ask for a little break and say to the person, mm -hmm. write down a few things, whatever, that you have your your ideas more or less, less explicit. And the kind of case, what I mean is, do you have an idea of the, um, uh, the level of mm -hmm. the project? where the problem actually is. Do you have an idea already of um, um, the history that mm -hmm. the patient told you? Because if he tells his complaint, he will probably say how long he is already troubled with it and what other things he has, etc. So you yeah. have like a, a, a quick overview of the whole case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
wh why is it worthwhile? Because there might be, and then you have to explore, there might be reasons to do other things first than try to look for the simulum. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the problem might not be there. Yeah. As I'm a simulum prescriber, I've seen often now that the simulum doesn't work. I'm trying to understand why, why it comes, why is, what is the reason for that. And when I see the patient, because I don't always see them, when I see the patient, I came to understand that the problem sometimes wasn't originated from the vital uh, level. It's not always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when it doesn't originate from the vital um, level, uh, often the simulum is not able to restore the har harmony on all levels. It's like yes. the other thing blocks it. The other thing is the other thing is still affecting the vital force too much for it mm. to be restoring itself. Yes. To health. Uh -huh. Yes. So it's not enough to say, yeah, the cases are complicated with all the suppression and all that. Yes, they're complicated in what what way, and what is the patient actually suffering from? Mm -hmm. If it is a completely disorganized and depleted immune system, it might not even be, how to say, his, his vital problem. So it might be a result yeah. of, of his lifestyle, and his lifestyle might, might even be almost unavoidable because yes. that's the environment where he lives in. You know? yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. you have too much stress and you have to have uh, less stress and you have to f do some yoga or what I don't know to relax well that won't help you know the society is still there <laughs> with all the sprinkles yes. and hands and, and yes. scenes and whatnot yeah. So, yeah you have to move and you have to change your life in order to get healthy that's not uh, a good solution for many patients no and if they're completely completely well, you have to say uh, depleted let's say if the energy body is empty it's 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 uh damaged you know there's things might go in but everything's just leaks out that they they can't they just can't live the life that the circumstances would ask from them even with the pressure like even diseased people should go to work nowadays or go to a psychotherapist because it's all between their ears you know <laughs> Those people won't even be helped with their uh, simulum. There's just um, enough energy. You have to uh, restore that first. Yeah, and that brings me to the other question, to another question that uh, that I thought of while you said this. This sounds to me as if it had to do also with individual constitutions, because mm -hmm. many people live in similar circumstances, but not all or with uh, similar lifestyles but not all mm -hmm. of them also suffer then from symptoms exactly it's the canaries right <laughs> 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 the ones who crash first yeah uh -huh. crash first they give in first combination eh, of, of less mm -hmm. uh, how to say um the, the threshold is lower mm -hmm. yeah yeah is that something that we also can treat Yes, but difficult, with difficulty. And that's why I'm saying complicated cases need long-term um, treatment and management. So if your patient come in with, with, with all these complications of medication and suppression and, and lifestyle and whatnot, you should educate them. But who yeah. to take the time, who is willing to, who is yeah. able to put all the time in that. If the patient is willing, of course, he can do a lot himself. Um, we should warn them that it's not a magic pill. They go to doctors, yeah. not to us. You know, yeah. it will take a while. A while mm -hmm. might mean two years. Yeah, because and it's also a yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> and the education is is tricky because there had been a lot of brainwashing going on from the early um, stage in life and it's difficult to undo it mm -hmm. especially if everybody around you is not uh, uh, doesn't, i don't know how to say it in english it's not everybody is blowing the same horn around mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. um, but i think it's also very necessary to educate 
people as we go from the first session on because uh, yeah. uh, and even if it's not uh, a, a matter of um, a disease induced by lifestyle or by medication it's important to educate them about the possibility of this yeah Yes, you know, before, I think that's also a change, before when we said, when we had simple cases, yeah. you could just pop in a pill, I mean a homeopathic pill, and, you know, miracles would happen. Whether they knew anything, or whether they changed anything, or whether they had no idea what you did, but no problem, you just give homeopathic remedy, and order was restored, as Hanuman yes. was But now, way too often, Mm -hmm. This doesn't happen. It does happen with children still. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's the good thing about it. So we don't lose trust in our homeopathic system. The system <laughs> is great. The system is yeah. fine. The patients yeah. are a bit less, you know. <laughs> <laughs> children still respond very well, uh, in general, very quickly in general. Mm -hmm. And so often the, the parents are convinced because of the children. If they yeah. just mm -hmm. would be less fearful, yeah, and send more children, that would be good for everybody. They're too fearful yeah. because if the children start to cough or they have a, just a little fever, you know, they rush to the doctor for antibiotics and, you know, all this medication to lower the fever. So also that needs education. Yeah. But if they finally go to the homeopath with the eczema or whatever and they see quick results, we know our system is fine, and they see that the results are there. But in grown-ups, who had longer history, have a longer history of suppression, complication, pressure, yeah. traumas, traumatic events, emotionally and all that, it probably will take longer. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I remember this now, I was sitting in with a very experienced homeopath in Germany and he would actually he would go with this classification and often he would treat a lot of people who uh, or better said he would recognize a lot of syndromes that were induced through medications and often through hormonal and medication like the pill mm -hmm. um, or thyroid medications or also uh, hypertension medication he would see that the syndromes that had developed through the use of these medications on a long-term basis yeah. and he would tell the people and he would even uh, quote Hahnemann that uh, homeopathic remedies were not designed to cure these conditions because it's they, they cannot just be cured with that it's a damage of the it's a constitutional damage yes mm -hmm. and uh, well he used the remedies anyway and of course yeah. they also helped the the patients but to just uh, rectify a little bit the expectation of the the persons the yeah. patients mm -hmm. it's a bit of a disheartening message of course we shouldn't we shouldn't tell it um too openly but wrap it up a little bit because indeed Hahnemann was talking about natural diseases mm -hmm. and a lot of things we see today a lot of patients come to us with unnatural diseases yeah. And the natural disease would be their state, their origin, yeah. their constitution, we call it their vital state, whatever, the way they are. That's their natural disease. Yeah. That's what I said, uh, Sankran incorporated as a miasm, you know, like yeah. the way you are, uh, whether it's acute or syphilitic, doesn't matter, it's your natural state. Mm -hmm. It's the miasmatic natural state, the way you perceive yourself and the world and how you operate on all levels. But then, if it's covered up or complicated or distorted with all kinds of unnatural diseases, which your colleague was more experienced in than I am for sure, eh? then it requires another treatment. And yeah. in Holland we have a lot of uh, homeopaths now who are trained in, in the CIS method. Uh, and that's a detox, detox uh, um, how do you say? Uh, procedure? Complete pr procedure of detoxification before you start you start even thinking of treating mm -hmm. yeah. and you know yeah. peter chapel has also a whole uh, uh, range of remedies for de detoxification on all levels and mm -hmm. he even claims that if you detox enough you know even the traumatic uh, residues 
you hardly ever have to treat the symptoms because they all disappear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, there is more to talk, but uh, mm -hmm. we are already um, talking for a long time, so I would like to ask you for another chat on this topic, and I would like to go to, into detail a bit more about this natural disease and induced disease and how we uh, discern on which on which level we have to address the problem of the, the yes. patient at the, in the current moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would like to speak about that in the next session. Yeah. Um, so in order for people to catch up a little bit or refresh their memories, um, mm -hmm. where can we find this in the organon? Can you mention a, an aphorism where, um, where Hahnemann wrote about it? I have to look it up. I think 70 and, and the following chapter. Um, yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 70, 70, around that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and about That's 100, where... 100, 100, 100, 204 is about epidemics, I think. Mm -hmm. the treatment uh, out of the normal, how to treat, because then yes. you can find the gene genus epidemicus. But I think the aphorism before that is classifications of disease. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, around 70, that's. Uh, it's not too many, actually. It's just a, maybe maximum 10 aphorisms where he talks about the classification. You know? <laughs> yes, you know, his, his organ on is theoretically, is theoretic, is theory until 70. And then it becomes practical from 70 yeah. on. And then he says, yeah. okay, there are a few things you have to know about diseases, about medication, how application. That's it. So he starts yeah. with diseases. Yeah. 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 Great. So um, we leave this for next time. And people can, uh, uh, yeah, review this in the organ. Um, and we will also speak about in, in the coming sessions about uh, more kingdoms, among them the fungi kingdoms, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which is another big, big thing. Yeah. And um, also another question that came in was what to do, um, when what to prescribe when we don't know which uh, substance it could be when we don't know the substance when we're uh, yeah when we have an idea but we cannot come to a conclusion mm -hmm. and that will tie in also with further discussions about classification i'm sure so that's something for the near future good so we keep that for the next talk on the friday yes okay. <laughs> somehow the next friday yes. so thank you very much anna i enjoyed this a lot mm -hmm. Welcome. And uh, have a good day. I see you next Friday. Okay. You too. Have a good weekend. See you next Friday. Bye. Bye-bye.